So welcome to the Physics Matter Colloquium series. So we are soon approaching 30 events since the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, this uh, series so for development permit us to travel virtually around the globe, proposing broad and popular science topics. So related to applied physics and the SESAMI project. So mainly connecting also developing and developed community around exciting projects. So last month, so Professor Nicolas Delarue had introduced a challenge-based innovation. And Rima Altamini so gave us an aperçu of the presentation that she gave two weeks ago at the APS March meeting. So that was a special meeting, which was very epic last March in Las Vegas, where we have gathered 12,000 people in person. So for that session, so the FIP had organized um, so six sessions. The next edition in April will have also six sessions, uh, pardon, three sessions. And I will describe a bit more what was presented in March and what will be presented in uh, April. We still also on the topic of the SESAMI last Monday, I mean, just uh, this uh, two days ago or three days ago, had the possibility, thanks to Gihan Kamel, directly from SESAMI, from Jordan Life, to have the possibility to witness so eight women who presented the inside as uh, uh, the session LL02, uh, which, is, uh, which was a wave of success and recognition connecting women scientists beyond skepticism, beyond borders. So now I will uh, focus and introduce uh, so the, the FIP for this uh, um, so forum. So we will open further high energy levels, so with gamma ray. And uh, for that, so the Gamma Factory with a professor, so Vitek Kramsin. So uh, I'm uh, um, also as uh, the panel member, so I'm working at uh, the European Inspiration Source in Sweden, so in uh, uh, the ESS, the European Inspiration Source. Uh, and we have, uh, so today, so the possibility with uh, Professor Vitek Kramsin uh, to learn more about those Gamma factories. So he obtained his PhD so from uh, the University in Krakow in 83. He worked at CERN, SLAC, Krakow, DESI, CA, Saclay, the Sorbonne University, Brookhaven National Lab, and in Oxford since then. In 1992, so he became director de recherche at the CNRS at la Sorbonne University in Paris. And Kramsey research, so interests include particle physics, the neutrino physics, the dark matter search, the QCD, and the quantum gluon structure of hadron matter. So the work, more or less all the hardware and trigger aspect of the high energy physics experiment, precision for electric physics, the Higgs physics, nuclear physics, atomic physics, and accelerator physics, so really broad knowledge. So he proposed and contributed to the development of the electron ion collider project initially so from DESI and I mean and now also with BNL and so he created and has led the gamma factory project for CERN. So you have uh, now so the possibility as well to ask uh, um, a question so you have the possibility to write them and we will take them after the presentation. So now so Vitek so the, the floor is yours or the screen is yours. Okay so uh, can I share my screen now? Can you see my slide? The first slide. In full mode. Yes, now, now I, I go to the uh, full screen mode. Is it okay? That works very well. Thank you. Okay. okay. So thank you, Christine, for this introduction. And uh, you see here. Let's go to the topic of this uh, of this seminar. And as you pointed out, this will be the seminar about Gamma Factory, which is not the project which is uh, which is being realized, but it's still in the uh, stage of conceptual status. And uh, it's a, it is a pleasure for me to uh, share with you a little bit uh, what we are doing with the Gamma Factory and what are the uh, perspectives of this project. The outline of this talk is uh, the following one. Uh, probably for this, uh, for the gamma factory, the most important point is to start with the scientific context. Uh, so this will be the beginning of my talk. Then I will uh, uh, explain you why I am interested in photons. 
uh, to go to the next subject, which is the, uh, the uh, presentation of the gamma factory photon source and all the uh, new research tools that uh, one can make out of this photon source. And I will touch on new research opportunities in the various branches of science. And finally, if I have some time, I will tell you a little bit about the Gamma Factory project status. So I start with scientific context. You see, uh, the uh, understanding of the elementary blocks of uh, matters and their interaction is a really a very big success story of accelerator-based science, as we all know. See, this is what has happened over one uh, last 100 years. And uh, uh, I should stress that, you see, if you see on the left side, the structure of quarks and leptons, you see, and the structure of the, uh, you see, of the, uh, of, uh, uh, the basic carriers of the strong, weak, and uh, electromagnetic uh, interaction, this progress was possible because on accelerators, we were able to create and tune the quanta of uh, the strong, uh, of, of the strong and uh, other type of uh, interaction, WZ and W bosons, uh, W plus, W minus, and Z bosons, but also photons and, uh, and gluons. So at some stage, you see the, the buildup of the standard model is, is complete and say, uh, we can either celebrate or say we can just ask uh, the question, what should be our next steps? What sh we should do next once the standard model of the particle interaction is established? So uh, to answer this question, what we can do next, uh, I would like to revisit with you three paths of progress in accelerator technology driven fundamental science. The first is the one that actually was dr driving all the progress in this domain. And this is increasing precision of the canonical measurement uh, to test well-established theories and models in new higher and higher energy. So you see, we can basically stay on this path by going to the next generation accelerators like FCC of ILC or CLIC and continue, you see this path of uh, trying to uh, measure uh, observables with better and better precision and search for the cracks in the standard model. The second uh, uh, pass of progress was very successful in the beginning of establishing the standard model, but it was less successful in the last 40 years. This is verifying prediction of new theoretical models and concepts. Why I'm saying that it was le less fruitful, because, for example, the 40 years of the supersymmetry searches ended up with in disillusion. And uh, we should uh, really admit that at present we have no guidance from the theory, neither for the energy scale uh, of the new phenomena, nor for the coupling strengths of new particles to the standard model particles. So, uh, it is a very unique time, you see, in which uh, we do not have any hints. Uh, what to do next as given by a brief reception of our friends' theorists. The third path, which I would concentrate in, in most of my talk today, are technological leaps. That means creating new accelerator technology-driven research tools or increasing the precision of established ones, but by several orders of magnitude, such that you make a leap. And say, uh, what I think personally is that at this moment, this is of particular importance because we neither have any hints for new physics, which is accessible by the present technologies at reasonable cost, not, nor a certainty that a particle physics will survive in its present form by addressing old question with the new incremental energy increase accelerators. I will put this last point, you see, in, you see, by making the citation of Dyson, who was always stressing the needs of the science, which is driven more by the tools than the, by the concept. He was saying, new direction of science are launched by new tools more often than by new concepts. The effect of the concept-driven evolution is to explain all things in new ways. For example, if you take the Higgs discovery, uh, before Higgs discovery, we were talking about the masses of leptons uh, and quarks, and now we are talking of the coupling constants, you see, of the leptons and quarks 
to universal Higgs field. So in some sense, you see, uh, you explain the things that you know, but in the new way. Uh, and he stressed that the effect of the tool-driven evolution is to discover new things that have to be explained. So in that sense, it is worthwhile to pursue the progress of science, not only in terms of verifying the concept, but also going to new tools. Why I will concentrate on photons as the tools you see that I will discuss in this seminar. The basic reason is that photons are the most precise research tools that we have at the moment. And I show you, you see uh, on this slide, the precision of quantum electrodynamics that describes the interaction of photons. For example, I have given uh, you the one example of the so-called uh, magnetic moment of the muon or the point-like leptons should have the magnetic moment of two. Uh, the measured one, you see, uh, is slightly different than two. And we understand why, because we can calculate in quantum uh, electrodynamics the corrections to this basic Dirac uh, equation uh, prediction. And what happens is that if this correction is calculated, you see those two numbers of the deviation from two agrees to a very, very last digit. You see, it's uh, a quantum electrodynamics controls photons to the precision to better than 10 to minus 7, 10 to the minus 9 of, of precision. So that's why I will concentrate on, say, on photons, because to me, they are the most pre precise tools. Also, you see, the reasons is that we know how to tune the wavelengths of the photons uh, by changing the, their energies from sub EV to hundreds of MeV region. And by doing that, we can go from the, uh, from the X-ray domain to gamma ray domain and study the structure of atoms, nuclei, and then go deeply into the structure of the nucleus and look at the electromagnetic structure of uh, nucleons. If you have the energy of the photons, which are larger than one MeV, you can do even more. You can actually start producing matter out of energy of those photons by converting photons into electron positron pairs or still at higher energy by converting photons in the field of the nucleus into the pair of muons. You can also use the a, a resonant processes of exciting the protons and neutrons to make monochromatic pions. Or last but not the least, uh, you can shine the light in the resonant frequency such that you emit uh, by the complex nuclei monochromatic neutrons or split the uh, large nuclei into, you see, neutron-rich isotopes. For the uh, uh, investigation of the atomic structure of matter, uh, there were several, you see, a presentation at this forum on the X-ray sources. So I will not say much about the X-ray sources. I will also only say that, you see, we have plenty of those and very precise ones. They are characterized by the duration of the, uh, of the pulse, repetition rate, number of photons per pulse, and you see the, something which is called uh, brilliance, which means how concentrated the beam of photon is. What I would like to uh, 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 recall from this slide for the rest of my talk is that this X-ray sources that exist have the energy limit, which is more or less of 100 keV, which is kilo electron volts. And they provide the intensities of the photons of the order of 10 to 16 photons per second. The situation with the gamma rays is not as optimistic as with the X-ray sources. There are several sources. The most performant one is uh, at, at Duke he, he, University in, in Durham. And uh, it gives you the intensities of the photons, which is several orders of magnitude smaller, up to something like 10 to the ninth photons uh, per second. So the origin of the gamma factory ideas we're coming from the, a simple question. Can one make a technological leap of more than seven orders of magnitude and deliver comparable or higher fluxes of gamma rays? That means the photons in the energy range more than one a mega electron of volt than the present X-ray sources. And 
the uh, answer is yes, we can do it and we can do it with the gamma factory concept. So now I will go to the gamma factory concept and say, I will explain you in as simple as possible way how uh, this works, you see, by using analogy to, uh, to something that everyone uh, of you know. So basically, the, uh, how we make the large energy photons is related to the Doppler effect. And Doppler effect is something that you know because everybody was exposed to a coming car with the horn and hearing the uh, apparent increase of the uh, high tunes when the horn, uh, when the car was uh, uh, approaching you. So uh, you see, uh, when you uh, hear the sound in the rest frame of the moving object, then it appears that the frequency of the sound is larger. The gamma factory concept is very similar. Uh, uh, we should change only the horn of the car into atoms and we change the sound into light. So I will go with this simple transparency to tell you, you see that uh, the way how the uh, quanta of light are produced, photons, is that uh, you see you excite atoms, for example, by the laser photon, the atom get excited and it weighs a little bit and emits randomly a photon, you see. The a, a quantum picture of Bohr of this process is that you, you have the electron structure and one of the electron jumps from say, one energy level to another level, it stays at this level and then decays. Now, what will happen, you see, if we take the analogy to the Doppler effect with the car, if we accelerate this ion to very high uh, velocity, which is almost the velocity of the light. So now let me analyze what, what is happening, you see, in the rest frame of the atom. So in the rest frame of the atom, uh, uh, for example, uh, we have the uh, photon source coming from the static laser. If you sit on the atom, which moves with higher velocity, the laser gets contracted because of the Lorentz uh, transformation, so does the, the photon, uh, photon frequency. So the frequency of the photon perceived by this atom with respect to the frequency of the photon, uh, uh, which is emitted by the laser in its rest frame, is multiplied by factor two gamma, and gamma is a function of, a, of a velocity of our atom. So you have the means of increasing the frequency of the laser light apparent frequency in the rest frame of the atom. Now, the atom gets excited and then it emits a photon. Uh, you see, now uh, we go back to the, to the laboratory frame in which the atom is moving. So we see it as, as contracted atom. And again, you see, if you observe those photons that are emitted towards our photon detector, we observe the frequency increase again by a factor two gamma. So this is basically the uh, basic uh, idea behind uh, getting the MEV photons out of EV photons. Because the energy leap that we can get, you see, a, a, with the gamma factory source is due to the fact that we take the photons which are coming from the laser which have the a, a, a lasers, uh, we take visible lasers, which have the, uh, uh, the frequencies and the energies of the order of electron volts. And then we use twice Lorentz transformation and Doppler effect. And for each absorbed photon, we get the final photon with the frequency, which is multiplied by four gamma Lorentz square. Now, of course, you need to have gamma, this factor, which is proportional to the uh, one over square root of one minus velocity square over C, at least by factor 1000, to go from EV photons to MEV photons. And presently, only CERN can deliver atomic beams of partially stripped ions of such an energy. So that's why you see if gamma factory project is ever realized, it can be realized in this energy range only at CERN. So the idea is very simple. You have this moving uh, atoms, for example, in the circular machine, then you put photons, 
You stack them, for example, in the fabric pair of cavity resonators that just bounce force and back, and they interact with the ions. And then you observe out of EV photons, visible light, gamma factory photons. You see, uh, you can even think of this process that you uh, go to LHC, take your uh, laser pointer, point on the LHC beam, and you get the gamma factory photons. Now, I was talking about the energy uh, jump. Now I will talk about intensity uh, jump. First of all, in order to put this into a circular machine, the atoms cannot be neutral. So I will be talking not of the atoms as we know, but those atoms in which you strip out most of the electrons except for a couple of electrons. So th those are still atomic systems, but they are, you see, a very spatial system. So if you calculate the cross section and the way how the photons interact with the uh, atomic beams, then in order to have the uh, intensity leap of seven to eight orders of magnitude, you have to have accelerated bunches of 10 to the eight to 10 to the nine partially stripped ions, which are delivered with 20 megahertz frequency. And you should have five millijoule laser pulses, which are stacked in 20 megahertz fabric per uh, 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 resonator. If you have the, those, and if you have those, those resonators, then you can talk about new technology of using resonance scattering of laser photons on ultra electric atomic beams to make high intensity and high energy photon beam. Now, the uh, birth of the gamma factory was to uh, find out that actually the CERN accelerator complex, which exists, already can provide the required number of uh, uh, ions per bunch and frequency of the uh, of the ion bunches. This system is shown here. It 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 gives you the full chain of uh, making the the atomic beams and uh, ionizing them and then accelerating them in Lear, PS, SPS, and in the LHC. So the gamma factory additional elements which are needed is first the modification of the ion stripping scheme. You see the way how you. A consecu consecutively strip out electrons on its way from the source up to the final machine. And also a, a, the requirement is how you store atomic beams in the LHC. A, and this has to do with the special way of collimating those beams. Now, so that's why you see when we started this project, the first test that we made uh, with the CERN accelerator complex was to really go with our scheme and say, try to find out if we can really prepare such a beams, inject them to the LHC and keep them for a sufficiently long time. And those tests were successful. We demonstrated for the hydrogen-like lead atoms in which you see, uh, we took the lead as a, uh, as a uh, nucleus and only one remaining electron. And we noticed that the lifetime of such a beam in the LHC is of the order of 40 hours, which means that we can use those beams for this gamma factory scheme of making high energy gammas. On the laser side, you see, we need to have five millijoule pulses at 20 megahertz, which is more or less the frequency of the bunches of ions in the LHC. And this is corresponding to 100 kilowatts of photon beam. And of course, we don't have lasers of such a power. So that's why we uh, would like to use the uh, off-shell lasers, which have the uh, input power of the order of, let's say, between 20 and 30 watts, and recirculate uh, the photons in fabric cavity. There were already such an installation on electron uh, uh, a beam, so there is nothing new uh, in terms of implementing such a system for the hadronic beams at, uh, at CERN. There are several questions of uh, technological questions that we would like to solve, but there is absolutely no uh, a vis a visible showstopper uh, from, the, uh, from the laser point of view. So I will summarize this by saying that, you see, uh, 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 thanks to the existing uh, infrastructure at CERN, the gamma factory can deliver fluxes of 10 to the 17 photons per second, which is also upgradable. If, for example, CERN would increase the, uh, 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 the power you see of the klystron, and uh, uh, we can even go to higher, higher intensity. 
And this can be done by using the present CERN accelerator infrastructure and commercially available lasers. And the reason for this jump of, uh, of intensity, because as a matter of fact, instead of ion uh, uh, or atoms, you can use electrons, is that the cross-section of collision of uh, uh, um, laser uh, photons uh, with atoms is of the order of gigabarn. And uh, uh, this cross-section is so huge that each ion can emit several photons by colliding with a photon pulse. So this is how we get such an extremely large fluxes of photons, which corresponds to seven orders of magnitude or more jump in, in magnitude. To tell you a little bit uh, to your intuition how many photons we produce, each of you knows the Avogadro number, which is the uh, number of atoms in one more of a, of a substance. So the gamma factor in megawatt proton beams actually provides you per day almost the same number of photons as you have. Uh, so, uh, so we produce photons in the macroscopic scale. And this opens new technological possibilities. For example, uh, uh, the possibility of thinking of new beam-driven energy sources, which I will probably mention a little bit later. Uh, this is a concrete technical example showing that it is not only the concept, but now we can go to the full simulation of a, a, a particular a, a ions that are in the LHC, for example, the helium-like calcium ions. Uh, uh, we uh, can choose a particular transition at the, at the particular laser that we can buy, and then we can calculate those fluxes and you see, find out, so you see, uh, to which extent this flux is larger in this energy range with respect to what has been achieved and what is planned in the, uh, just to uh, make the confirmation not in terms of you see the raw numbers but in terms of full simulation including you see the geometry of the collision of those photons uh, that we can go to this uh, very high uh, jump in the intensity i would like to also to stress that those photons are uh, pretty much uh, collimated you see most of those photons in this particular case will be collimated to two milli radians and even if the spectrum of those photons is broad then we can use the correlation between the energy and the angle of emitted photons and make very monochromatic beams of those photons. So I will summarize the extraordinary properties of the gamma factory photon source. So they have pond-like small divergence. We have huge jumps of intensity. We can have very wide range of tunable energy photon beam between 4 keV and 400 MeV which extends by factor 1000, the energy range of the free electron laser photon sources. I would like to stress that we can, we know how to uh, polarize gammas, which we totally knew, and we can get the gamma beams polarized up to 99%. And what is now very important to discuss is that uh, the plug power efficiency or the energy footprint of such a source would be a uh, very attractive, for example, because the LHC RF power can be converted to the photon beam power almost totally. For example, if you compare the plug power efficiency of gamma factory photon source and there's the XFEL, there is a factor of 300 gain in terms of you see here, the efficiency, the plug power efficiency of making the photons uh, by the gamma factory prescription. And you see, I will mention that uh, we uh, we invented uh, the trick how to make polarized uh, photons by using Pauli principle. Uh, I can explain it more uh, 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 if I have questions. And uh, we know also how to make twisted photons. You see, twisted photons are very special photons that carry angular momentum that can be used for a very special way of uh, excitation of nuclei. And so you see, uh, this brings me to uh, the last transparency of this, uh, of this part of my talk. What is gamma factory? The gamma factory in a nutshell is the infrastructure and the operation mode of the CERN accelerators allowing to produce, accelerate, cool, and store beams of highly ionized atoms and excite their atomic de degrees of freedom by laser photons to form high intensity secondary beams of gamma rays, but also to produce plug power efficient diverse tertiary beams, and also the research program in the broad domain of science, which is enabled by the gamma factory tools. So gamma factory is a little bit more than the gamma factory source. 
what are the new research tools made out of light that you see a, a there are plenty of uh, a example i a, i would like to choose five of those and go very quickly you see a, a, a christine do i have 45 minutes or he, he... yeah 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 don't worry you have no limit okay okay Within half so, an hour. Uh, Yes, so we are just, uh, I'm talking now for 25 minutes, okay. So uh, uh, I will give you five examples of uh, the novel tools. First of all, unprecedented intensity photon beams, then atomic traps of highly charged atoms, which are very important for new development in atomic physics. Then I will tell you, you see a little bit on the electron beam for EP collisions in the LHC interaction points. You see in the LHC, you have the interaction of protons or ions. And the gamma factory provides you, you see, a cheap way of making also the collision of electrons with protons. I will tell you a little bit more in the a qualitative way on the laser light based cooling methods of high energy hadronic beams. Again, a very important subject because the gamma factory way of cooling beams is the only cooling method which gains power when you go to higher and higher energies of hadronic beams. And then I will mention how using gamma factory photons, you can uh, drive high intensity sources of polarized electrons, positrons, muons, but also neutrinos, neutron and radioactive ions. For the usage of high intensity uh, megawatt photon beams, instead of talking of, of the science application, I would use this transparency to somehow uh, get your interest for the special se session that Christine is organizing at the next APS meeting in Minneapolis. And I will talk of the possible application of those high intensity beams to a photon beam driven energy source. So uh, on the left side, I have given you Patrick Jeannot uh, uh, estimates. You see what would happen if the new uh, uh, accelerator, which is being considered at CERN, which is FCC in the EE mode and HH mode, you see, which consumes the power of the order of, of 260 to 580 megawatts. You see, what would happen if you would like to drive this uh, uh, new accelerators with clean energy? So uh, just for your imagination, uh, if you would take it from the solar power, this would require a, a building a five a, a meter wide solar uh, panels, you see, along 100 kilometers of the FCC ring. If uh, you would use the uh, uh, wind turbines, then you would require 500 such turbines, uh, one every 200 meters along 100 kilometers of FCC ring. And you see the second uh, part is uh, uh, prob problematic for all, all people that were trying to do windsurfing on the Geneva Lake. You see, it's, uh, it's not that many days that you, would, that, that you would have wind. So the gamma factory beams, we are having now the studies which are quite promising in which the, uh, uh, we can drive with the megawatt up to 10 megawatt beam of photons by using resonant processes in which we produce neutrons and make fissions of the nuclei uh, to make a, a re reactor which is subcritical. That means that you see it would not work if you would not supply extra neutrons or extra fissions. And the reactor that would uh, give you the requisite power for uh, for the present and future CERN scientific program, in, even for the adventure in which you would consume up to 580 megawatts of power. So I use this transparency only as a, you see, appetizer for the special session in which you see, we'll discuss it a bit more, uh, the usage of this high intensity uh, photon beams because so far there were some concept of using the, uh, you see the accelerator driven system, but mostly driven by the proton beams. So I hope that we'll have the discussion of uh, uh, and compare those two schemes at, at Minneapolis. Atomic traps of highly charged small, small size ions. You see, uh, uh, when you uh, have in the LHC, the atoms, for example, lead circulating with one or two attached electrons, so you have the atomic system, uh, which you see, if you sit in its red frame, is exposed to pulse magnetic and electric fields of the storage rings. 
So we have the stored atoms. So in some sense, our trap is no longer stationary, but it moves. But thanks to the fact that it moves, you see, and thanks to Doppler effect, we can manipulate those, you see, atomic states with the stationary laser due to Doppler shifting of the frequency of the laser to the rest of these atoms. And this, this gives enormous possibility in studying small size atoms, especially looking for the quantum effects and quantum field effects and also for weak, weak effects in atomic physics. We can even think of going to lower intensity and try to make crystalline beams. So there are many people in atomic physics that are very interested, you see. So it's not only that you see the, I wanted to give you this, this example because I would like to convey the message that if gamma factor is ever constructed at CERN, it does not address the question of, you see, of the, of the particle physics or nuclear physics, but also of uh, atomic physics. How you get the uh, uh, electron proton collisions at the LHC? Very simple, you see, in the gamma factory scheme, you uh, have the system and you accelerate and store the beams of, uh, let's say, hydrogen-like lead, the one that we have tested that, uh, uh, have the, the lifetime of the order of 40 hours in the LHC. So you, you inject such a beam, and then you, if you calculate the average distance of the electron uh, to, uh, to the nucleus, it is much smaller with respect to hydrogen atom, but still is much larger with the range of strong, strong interaction. So if such a, a hybrid system of the nucleus and electron collides with the counter-propagating beam of proton, the proton would see either electron or a, a nucleus. So we would have a parasitic collisions of proton and electrons with no cost, you see. And you can observe those collisions in the existing detectors without modifying them. The third example I wanted to show you, I will not go to the full explanation of what is uh, happening, I will tell you that, you see, one of the problems with uh, high energy uh, uh, beams of hadrons is that uh, uh, contrary to electrons, which can be cooled at high energy because they radiate photons, so you reaccelerate them and you make the uh, uh, beams of, uh, you see, of small emittance, that means of small size and small divergence. For the hadronic beams, the only method which uh, gets the strengths is the method by using the laser cooling in which you see you still keep the electron on the shell of your, for example, nucleus, for example, light nucleus. And then you shine the light, but only on the fraction of the ions. You see, the ions in the LHC are spread in terms of momentum to the uh, fraction of the uh, uh, set momentum of the beam of 10 to minus 4, but the possibility of tuning the laser is much finer. So we can actually interact only with the fraction of the ions, and you can actually manipulate those beams and getting the beams of smaller size and smaller divergence. For example, in technical terms, if you would consider the evolution of a normalized transverse emittance of the beam, we have demonstrated with our simulation that we can achieve over uh, the period of 10 seconds, the reduction of the emittance of, uh, of the beam by a factor of four to five. And last but not the least, you see, if you have the source of photons, then you, you may readdress many questions, you see, in, a, in contemporary physics, particle physics, by a, having the sources of a, a uh, tertiary beams, which correspond to the intensities which have never been reached with conventional metals. For example, you can make polarized positrons with a potential gain of factor 10 to the fourth with respect to the highest intensity cake positron source, which is satisfying both the lemma muon collider scheme and LEC requirements. You can produce a, you can produce muons uh, with the intensity, which is uh, by factor 1,000 larger 
with respect to the uh, 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 most, you see, uh, uh, abundant uh, source uh, uh, of muons, which is at PSI. Uh, and uh, on top of that, you can assure something that you can never get out of the muon sources, which are driven by the proton beams, the equality of produce mu plus and, and mu minus. And on top of that, you may hope to get the polarization control of produce muons. If you have polarized muons, you can produce very special beams of neutrinos. And uh, by having the pions, for example, of very narrow uh, energy byte, you can produce very narrow uh, band beam of the neutrons. And by using uh, polarization degrees of freedom, you can produce for the first time flavor and CP tuned beams of, uh, of neutrinos. For the neutrons, you see a, a gamma factory could produce neutrons at a comparable flux per, you see, the megawatt power of the beam as the spallation source uh, at the place in which Christine is working and ESS. But the difference is that uh, the gamma factory, since it is using resonant process, you see, it produces monochromatic neutrons. And it can also produce, also in the a, a resonant way, radioactive nuclear uh, neutron rich ions, which represents a factor of 10,000 gained, for example, uh, to such a source, which is, for example, in Orsay, and it is called ALTO. The new research opportunities of the gamma factory, as I started saying, do not concern only particle physics, but it concerns nuclear physics, atomic physics, astrophysics, fundamental physics, such like studies of basic symmetries of the universe, atomic interferometry, but also accelerator physics and applied physics. You see, I don't have time to uh, go to each of this, uh, you see, a list of in which domain of those branches of physics gamma factory would contribute. But for those of you who are interested, I suggest that you go to Inspire and just type find title gamma factory. And then you will have our last papers, you, which we published over uh, five years, which you see expose detailed studies, what gamma factory could do in all these branches of science. You see the last paper is, you see the paper on the high intensity a high intensity muon and, and, and positron source. And we also published a special issue a, a year ago in Analender Physique, which is fully devoted to the gamma phys a factory physics highlights. What is the status of the gamma factory? The gamma factory a, a, a proposal was sent to the CERN management something like six years ago. And since then, about 100 physicists from uh, 40 institutions have contributed to the gamma factory studies. And we, uh, we are very happy and we should uh, acknowledge that gamma factory studies are anchored and supported by the CERN Physics Beyond Colliders PBC framework. And this is the link in which you can find out by clicking, you see uh, what is the uh, uh, info of the uh, activity of the gamma factory group. And I would use this opportunity to, to acknowledge the crucial role of the CERN PBC framework in bringing our accelerator test, gamma factory pro principle experiment design, software development, and physics studies to the present stage. Where we are. So the, there are a six gamma factory milestones as specified very early on before the development of this project. The first was to, to make the successful demonstration of efficient production, acceleration, and storage of atomic in the sand complex. And this was done. We develop up nihilo the requisite gamma factory software tools, because you see, we started with totally a, a new domain of, a, of collision of laser light and making the gamma rays and then making secondary beams. So we now have all these software tools. Now a, we spent quite considerable time to building up the physics cases by all the communities for the LHC-based gamma factory research program. And uh, we are still trying to uh, attract wide scientific communities to evaluate and use in the future the gamma factory tools in the respective research. 
the most crucial point at which we are now is this is the successful execution of gamma factory pro principle experiment in the SPS standard. See, in order to implement our scheme at the LHC, it is important that we test the technological part. And you see the, uh, the basic question of engineering running and the installations in the smaller scale. And we plan to do it in the SPS. We have submitted, you see, the proposal of such a pro-principle uh, experiment uh, uh, in 2019. And uh, uh, the foreseen installation time of this uh, experiment is in the uh, shutdown between 2026 and 2027. We are still missing 1.5 megas uh, Swiss franc to construct the uh, pro-principle uh, uh, experiment, but we hope that we'll get this money, for example, from the EU financing. It will be the last point in terms of feasibility studies. And then on the basis of all these developments, we plan to make extrapolation of this result of the pro principle experiment in the SPS to the LHC case and make precise assessment of the performance figure of the Gamma Factory program. And then on that basis, we can elaborate the uh, technical design report for the LHC based uh, Gamma Factory research program. So I will not go to the details of this experiment. We would like to put our Fabry Perot cavity in the place on the SPS ring, which is actually very close to the entry to CERN. And this is, you see how this system uh, would look like in the cut drawing. You see, this is how uh, we would uh, resonate those photons, you see, vertically, you see, such that they will cross the line of the ions. And this is how we would get out our photons. So I'm uh, coming to the close because after introducing you the concept of the gamma factory and also you see some say, uh, some sketch of what gamma factory could do, uh, I would say what could be a potential place of gamma factory in the future CERN research program. And this is really the context in which you see uh, I started this project and why we have developed you see this project up to the present stage. I would say that the next CERN high energy frontier project may take long time to be approved, built, and become operational, if ever. And uh, if it is operational, it is unlikely before 2045 FCCEE or 2050 or plus for the muon collider. My point was always that the present LHC research program will certainly reach earlier, probably after 2032, after the first phase or the second phase of high luminosity running, it's discovery uh, saturation. What I mean by saturation, uh, 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 that there will be a little physics gained by simply extending the PP, PA, and AA running time. Because if you reach the highest, highest luminosity, then you can increase only the uh, integrated luminosity in a way proportional to the number of years that, that, that you run. So at certain moment, if you collect some luminosity, getting four times a higher, higher luminosity means four times longer running. So uh, this is what I called a discovery saturation, which happened to all the uh, installation that we know to lab for, to, 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 for example, Tevatron. And uh, uh, my vision is that at this moment, a strong need will uh, certainly ar arise for a novel multidisciplinary program, which could reuse or co-use the existing CERN facilities, including LHC, by diverse communities, not only by particle physics communities, in ways at levels that were not necessarily thought of when the machines were designed. And the gamma factory research program that I was trying to show you some say, in some say, you see short way could fulfill such a role. It can exploit the existing world unique opportunities offered by CERN accelerator complex and CERN scientific infrastructure, which is not available elsewhere to conduct new, diverse, and vibrant research with new tools. Conclusions. Gamma Factory can create at CERN a variety of novel research tools, which could open new research opportunities in the very broad domain of basic and applied science. The Gamma Factory research program can be largely based on the existing third accelerator infrastructure. It requires relatively minor in terms of cost and manpower infrastructure investment. 
its quest for diversity of research subject and communities. And I would recall, you see, the context of uh, developing the Gamma Factory project is of particular importance in the present phase of accelerator-based research, as we neither have any solid theoretical guidance of a new physics just around the corner, which is accessible by the FCC or CLIC, nor an established reasonable cost technology for a leap into very high energy terra incognita. Gamma Factory project needs to finalize its R&D studies and demonstrate its feasibility by the SPS Gamma Factory Pro principle experiment, which we designed, prior to reaching the advanced phase of the high luminosity LHC program, such that the decision can be made if Gamma Factory would enter, you see, as the, one of the program or the dominant program, you see, uh, after this phase. For that, we need CERN and Y scientific community support for this project. And this support is sine qua non condition for its further, further development. And you see, I finalized this with my dream vision of how LHC may look like in some period of time from now, with a, a, a numerous station of the lasers, you see, that would interact, you see, with the a, a stored beams of a, a partially stripped ions with various stations devoted to particular domain of physics or uh, to the application studies. So I would like to thank you for your attention. So if there are any questions, then I would be happy to answer any question. You rose a lot of questions. I mean, wonderful talk, very pedagogical, and we've learned a lot about the capacity from uh, the gamma. Really impressive. So yes, you have uh, quite some questions that were raised in the Q&A. So please go on and, and everyone can add some and we can give you as well the voice. So if you want. So first uh, question was, and that might be at the earlier time. So it might have been already answered by the talk, but you can summarize. Huh? So how do researchers control the intensity and the energy of the gamma ray produced in a gamma factory? And what are some of the technical challenges involved in building and operating those facilities? You see, there are several technical challenges that we would like to test in the SPS. For example, the fabric pero cavities and, uh, and the transport system from the remote, you see, laser room has never been tested in a, a hadronic machines, which uh, with respect to el electron machines in which such, such a system were installed, have larger radiation level, you see, and we don't know how a, such a system would behave, you see, or the a, a control of the fabric pero cavity, you see, in the a, hadronic. A, so this is one of the, a, was one of the important aspects. The second aspect that we would like to test, and we have already tested to, to some extent, you see, a, a, with respect to electron-driven sources of gamma rays, we are using very narrow resonances. So a, we have to precisely tune the laser frequency, not only in space, but also in frequency, in order to sit on the resonance, you see. So the SPS Pro principle experiment should demonstrate that we can achieve very stable offer operation of those collisions over hours, you see. For the moment, what we have tested only is that the SPS beam is stable enough that you see, if we have, you see, the tuned position and the angle, you see, of our fabric pero cavity, then uh, we can basically preserve the beam to the precision which is needed to be within the resonance, uh, 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 within the resonant frequency. So this is the second aspect. There are also several other aspects like synchronization and say, uh, but I would like not to go to, to too much details in terms of technical proof. Be, be assured that you see, we would like to test all the schemes in the SPS uh, uh, configuration, which is much more difficult with respect to LHC. Why it is more difficult than in LHC? Because the SPS vacuum is by a factor of 1,000 worse with respect to LHC. The lifetime of the atomic beams in the SPS is much shorter 
because we are losing electrons in the collision with the gas. So that's why you see everything that has to do with radiation on you see or a, a vibration and uh, you see we are in the much worse configuration with respect to going to the uh, superconducting ring. So I hope that I uh, uh, at least partially answered, you see, signaling what kind of test we would like to uh, make in the SPS Pro principle uh, experiment. If someone is more interested, then please go to our proposal, which is uh, uh, accessible and, and given if in my presentation, you see, and find out what aspect we are going to test in the SPS. Thanks a lot. So that's really interesting and somehow connected. So I jump to the third question. Uh, so how does a scientist detect and measure the gamma ray produced so in the gamma factory? And what type of instrument are typically used for that this purpose? So while you were describing the SPS, are you reusing the same instrumentation or do you add some more diagnostic? You see, it depends for what purpose you would like to use gamma rays. First of all, if you profit from high intensity of the of the gamma rays, you see, first of all, for the tertiary beams, you go to megawatt beams of photons and you send them into the target. And then there is the full domain of the problem of the targetry, you see, of for megawatt time of beams. But then you optimize them to make the secondary beams of positrons or, or for example, polarized muons or uh, pions. So, so this is one thing. For the, uh, for the uh, physics studies, if you would like to use those gammas, you would probably not go to highest intensities, but you would try to monochromatize those beams by the system of collimation in which instead of getting 10 to the 17th gammas per second, you would go to much lower fluxes, but with a very precisely defined energies of the gammas of 10 to minus 7, you see, or, or 10 to minus 6 of the initial, you see here. And then you would use the typical detectors here for the gamma rays, you see. For the, 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 I, I don't know what, what to quote. It depends what you would like to see, whether you would like to study, for example, the, uh, the uh, excitation of the nuclei, with, uh, for example, with twisted photons or with polarized photons. Then you would go to the target and you see the, the system that would look for the secondary gammas emitted like in the case of a Agatha spectrometer or you see all kinds of it. We are not addressing now this question of the detection you see of it because it is the question for which purpose you would use those gammas. Whether you would use them for pure science with gammas or for the second for the science with with energy uh, producing scheme, or for example, for the tertiary beams. So but, I would leave this open. You see, it's uh, it, it depends uh, if someone has some some idea how to use the, those gammas in terms of lower intensities, better resolution in terms of energy. You see, and uh, so uh, all possibilities are open if you start with such a intensity and such a precise correlation between the angle and the uh, energy of the of the emitted gammas and the energy exactly so this is um, an open uh, uh, possibilities as well and to think about development as you said some challenge for the instrumentation to be able to to measure those different um, parameters and depending maybe as well on the type of accelerator so the question uh, just before was uh, so how does it differ from other type of particle accelerators you spoke about the adron about uh, the lepton as well and different type of ions. So maybe just to summarize uh, that point. You see, a, a, one of the reasons for developing the Gamma Factory project is that we, pr we do not expect much to happen if you go to higher and higher energy in terms of finding new particles. A, this is what, what I stressed. So one of the uh, uh, reason and one of the comparison with the existing accelerators is not to go to the highest energies with the gamma factory project, but to go to the energies of the gammas, which corresponds to investigating the internal structure of nucleus, but also to producing matter and anti-matter anti particle in equal, uh, uh, with equal characteristic, abundantly. For example, if you would like to retest at much higher precision as now 
the symmetry between matter and antimatter. Most likely, you see the uh, the period of, of, that we had over the last 20 years that we were expecting that the dark matter particles are coming as SUSE particles of the masses of, of the order of few hundred GeV that would be, uh, you see, uh, corresponding to what you would need from the astrophysical constraints are over. People now are talking of the uh, so-called anthropo anthropological dark matter. That means dark matter particles, which have the masses very similar to the existing matter. So once more, you would like to have the accelerator and you see and the system in which you produce photons, which are the mediators, in which you can have, uh, thanks to the high abundance of those photons, access to those dark matters, uh, dark matter particles, which may have similar masses like the normal particles. So in some sense, this is the inverse paradigm with respect to developing higher and higher energy uh, uh, accelerator. You go back to the energies which corresponds to the masses of existing matter, but you try to increase the precision by having higher fluxes, more precise beam, and going deeply into, you see, something which is unknown and maybe hidden to the uh, experiment that we're using. You see the sources that were uh, seven or eight orders of magnitude weaker with respect to what we can deliver. Yeah, very nice, very nice answer and very complete. So another question. So you have so many questions. It's wonderful. So uh, what are some of uh, the potential application of gamma ray produced by the gamma factory, such as medical imaging, radiological therapy, uh, radiation therapy, sorry, or fundamental research in physics and astronomy? So in those other fields. You see, one of the potential uh, applications which we have not developed yet, but this is on, on our to-do list, is the using of resonant processes of gammas with different, with various polarization, and you see, with even using twisted twisted gammas to make a so-called alpha alpha emitters. And so you see, uh, to make alpha emitters by a uh, very fine-tuned processes with specific nuclei. So we are searching for people that would uh, take this. You see, we have the overview paper on nuclear physics uh, application, which you may find if you go to Inspire, and then you go to Inspire and type gamma factory and nuclear application. And there is one paper which gives you the summary of all the uh, nuclear physics uh, uh, application. The one on the uh, uh, alpha emitters is only mentioned, but it is not developed. But we, we are sure that gamma factory, which is gamma beam, could provide new way of making alpha emitters, which for me are in the future, one of the best way of uh, uh, treating the localized uh, cancer, you see, because you you will know that you see the alphas are the, are the only particles that have the range in the tissue of the order of uh, 10 to 100 cells, you see. So that means that if you can make those uh, those uh, uh, those emitters and transmit it somehow via chemical processes to the part of the tumor, then it would not destroy, you see, the same tissue, but, but, but also the, uh, the tissue, which is, uh, it, it's something which is on, on our to do this, and we hope that we can say, contribute also to this uh, applied uh, part you see of the of the gamma factory. Exciting! So much development possible. So another question, so from uh, Sverker Verin at uh, Max4 here. So could you comment on the difference and advantage as well of the gamma factory compared to the Compton backscattering of laser beam on relativistic electrons? You see, I I try to is. Just, uh, 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 to uh, stress the point that in terms of kinematics, the only difference between a uh, inverse Compton scattering on electron beam and on atomic beams is that you see in our process, this is not virtual process. You excite atoms, you wait, uh, and the typical waiting time you see, is, uh, for example, for hydrogen like lead is such that you see the uh, excited ion moves over the distance of 0.3 millimeters, and then it de-excites. 
or the electron when you excite the electron you see this is virtual process it, 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 the electron gets excited and it re-emits the photon so in terms of relativistic kinematics and doppler effect both sources are equivalent and it is easier to get electrons of the gamma of 1000 than ions of the gamma of 1000 for which you have to go to lhc the gain of the gamma factor is only because of the a gigabarn cross section of interacting of the laser a, photons with atoms with respect to barn cross section of interaction of a, 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 fo a laser photon with the electron so most of the gain that we get is coming for the same technology of the lasers you see and the same intensity of the beams is coming only from the cross section uh, we interact much stronger with the uh, you see more or less the uh, uh, the cross section uh, for interaction of photons with atomic beams is more or less the cross section of the atom while the classical uh, radius of electrons is much much smaller so this is the reason of this 10 to the 9 10 to the 8 jump in terms of cross section of the of the collision except for that there is no difference if you go to a little bit more deeper into this question the electron beams you can probably uh, gain a little bit by uh, uh, by going to extremely small emittances of the beams but this is why we invented you see this method of laser cooling of the uh, of the atomic beams because we can follow more or less the same way of cooling like for the electrons this cooling is important in in a, for the case in which you would like to uh, make the most precise coloration of the uh, uh, gamma energy with respect to its angle so on this aspect by a uh, laser cooling we can approach you see the precision of this correlation which is given by the uh, by the electron source summarizing the main difference is the intensity of the beam a electron driven beam will never be able for a given laser technology even to approach in terms of intensity the photon source which is driven by the by the atomic beams i hope that you see if you need still go to uh, to more deeper i can go more deeper but then i would need yeah, exactly. a, a more a, a precise <laughs> questions on which aspect you see here whether maybe this I is also running the aspects or here exactly also maybe thinking about uh, compact accelerator or because i saw that you had as well uh, luca serafini i just uh, find out uh, that uh, he was in one of the list of the the inspire article that uh, you had listed sure so, and, he's yeah. a member of the gamma factory exactly so that that's one of the about uh, the compact accelerator so that could be as well something by itself that could be built for that purpose you see a uh, definitely you see a uh, 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 using lhc to get the uh, uh, extremely intensive uh, um, gamma source is something that at first sight looks uh, you see it's such a large in infrastructure you see and it consumes of the order of 20 megawatts you see when i calculate this energy efficiency you see uh, uh, so uh, uh, for the electron beams of the same gamma you can make it in a more compact way so uh, i would never propose myself making the gamma factory if lhc was not constructed and if I didn't know that most of the accelerators that have been constructed, like for example, PS or SPS long time ago, may have a long lifetime. So this is just the uh, application of something that exists. Uh, if uh, you would be on the green fields, then probably you would rather go to lower intensity with electron beams and much smaller, you see, uh, accelerators not to go to such extreme intensity you would abandon some part of the physics program but you could go to a compact uh, systems so you see i would like not to make you see uh, this too much you see such that this is uh, uh, does not bring any any complications the complication is that this source requires the beams in the lhc and the operation of the lhc with with, with atomic beams so it has nothing to do with small, you see, size, uh, 
uh, infrastructures, like for example, electron driven say, sources can be. Exactly, because then indeed the follow-up question from uh, Sverker was as well in the, the bandwidth smaller. You see, the the bandwidth, uh, it, it, it depends. Uh, the, the bandwidth in terms of energy, uh, when you go to the collimation of the beams, radial collimation by radial slits, we have demonstrated in one of our papers that we can go to almost the same, you see, uh, uh, bandwidth, which is all the order of 10 to minus 6 with respect to the energy by, uh, by, by radial collimation. But for that, we need to have a uh, laser cooling of, uh, of the beams. And the laser cooling is, is, is very efficient. If you don't cool the, the beam, the bandwidth that we can get in terms of uh, trying to get monochromatic gammas would be by factor 100 worse, you see, with respect to uh, uh, what you would get out of, uh, of electron sources. If you go to spe specific application, in which the precision of the energy ray counts. Mm -hmm. okay. Which is, for example, not the case for tertiary beams, for which it is not, uh, for most of, uh, of the application is not the, the most important point, but for some of them, we know how to do it by cooling the beams with the laser cooling methods. Mm. Very good, very good. Indeed. So, so then the next question, um, indeed, which is more global. So, with Cheryl Spencer, so who was a former head as well of uh, the Forum of International Physics and the Forum for Physics and Society. Um, so, speaking about the, the the tertiary use possible, so sounds long, sounds like uh, you can uh, put uh, many of the other lab out of business. So, I think it was <laughs> a really fun uh, command. But so, what do they think about your proposal? So, maybe indeed from the DOE lab or NSF lab in America or elsewhere. So, you what see, are the competition and what the, would be the cost? Um, the competition with, is with the Eli project, in, 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 which is the project which, uh, with respect to, you see, before I started this project, I went to Duke, you see, I, I, I visited Duke and you see, I discussed with people there, you see, he, and Duke is still the, uh, uh, the most, you see, uh, 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 the best gamma ray source, which is, uh, which is operating. There's of course, new project, which is Eli, which is Eli, in R R Romania, it has some, some problems, but it, it will probably uh, come. They plan to achieve the uh, intensity of the photons of, of the order of uh, 10 to 11, 10 to the 12th, maybe even 10 to 13th, with respect to our 10 to the 17th or 10, 10 to 18th. So, uh, uh, of course, you see, uh, 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 not to be on the same, you see, domain of science, there will be probably uh, the, they could go to better definition of the monochromaticity of the beams and uh, do some very dedicated studies of nuclear physics. While uh, you see for the gamma factory, I am thinking of the you see of the industrial uh, application applied physics, but also in terms of producing of secondary beams, because my preoccupation is, for example, the, is the uh, lepton universality. I would like to have the beam in which I can go from the typical uh, source of muons, which we have now at PSI of, of, uh, of 10 to the 10th to 10 to 14th, you see here. Uh, and, uh, and also you see uh, uh, as a positron source, but uh, so, so there are several applications you see, which can be complementary in between two. Uh, so uh, I, I see only this competition, you see, and you see that, uh, the person from uh, 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 Yink, uh, uh, you see, uh, uh, the person who is from uh, uh, from uh, Duke is actually joining the, the Gamma Factory. And there is a, a document of, of the future Gamma Factory in, in which uh, uh, of the photon sources in the MEV range in which Gamma Factory is mentioned, you see, as a dream, a, a futuristic vision, you see, of uh, what can be done. Uh, but the real competition uh, in some part of the nuclear physics application, if Eli is constructed and if uh, a, a gamma factor is working, it would be mostly in, in terms of some measurement in nuclear physics, you see, uh, with extremely well, well defined and precisely energy tuned beams. For the, for the nuclear physics, indeed. And this is why I've been come to the April meeting, because you will be also listening as well for the ELI, and then we can see more in terms of competition, how we can 
build up something useful. And I will present this at the end. So the next question indeed from Cheryl was speaking about the cost. So the, the cost of a gamma factory, so what would you buy itself as well? What would it be compared as well to the cost of the ILC, for instance? Look, uh, we know precisely what is the cost of the laser station. Uh, uh, that means laser and fabric repair cavity and installation of, of the laser. It's of the order of 2.45 million uh, uh, Swiss franc per crossing with uh, uh, now, uh, uh, the cost of cavern, you can take out of the cost of cavern, which was recently uh, estimated. So, so for, for each crossing, you would have to build a cavern because the photons coming from the gamma factory would come out tangentially to the, uh, 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 to the ring. And you see most of the installation that you would make would be distance uh, at least 100 to one kilometer out of, you see, of the point of the uh, of the uh, production of the photons, and the cost of the cavern as specified for the uh, for the present projects, uh, at CERN to uh, somehow enhance the LHG capacity and looking for the forward physics, would be typically of the order of uh, 50, uh, 50 million uh, Swiss franc. You see, and then you see uh, what you would put in this cavern. It depends what kind of application you would like to use. So 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 this cannot be quantified, but in terms of infrastructure, laser plus fabric fa cavity installation, you see a, a, a mechanics services. It's something that uh, we have uh, precisely evaluated for the SPS. There is no difference between SPS and LHC. And uh, you see the cost of cavern per one cavern, you see per one extraction point would be order of 50 to uh, 60,000. Uh, uh, to 60 million uh, Swiss francs. So with respect to, uh, to the uh, ILC or any project that are, you see, on the market for high energy domain, this is something which is totally in the background, you see. It's, uh, it's not something that would uh, require significant, you see, uh, uh, increase of the, uh, of the budget. Yeah, thanks a lot for those answers. Uh, quantitatively speaking, indeed, and then quantitatively speaking, we have, um, so here, so Sekasi, so Mitsuga, whom you certainly know, because he is inviting you as well, and he referred to the uh, Indigo page, so for the uh, talk, the virtual workshop that you will give, so on Moonbeam, for various studies as well, for the Brookhaven Electron Ion Collider. So this yes, is... I'm I'm very indebted that he's organizing. You see, this is the first ever workshop in which people will look for the first time how you use photons instead of protons to make muons. Having the advantage of symmetricity between mu plus, mu minus, playing with the uh, spin, and you see all kinds of things that uh, we hope that we can bring up at this workshop. And I'm looking forward to this workshop. Exactly. I, 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 I'm very indebted to uh, uh, to organizing this, this workshop. To organize this, so for the BNR, but as well, so for indeed for the, the African. So this will be in Stony Brook in, 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 in ten, 10 days from now. Exactly. And this yeah, is yeah. The, the, the one that you were describing before. And after you will be as well, as you mentioned, going to Fermilab and then to GLAB. So I think it yes. will be driven even more interest. The 5th of April, like as you said, that you will be. Yes. At that's BNR. right. The, the 5th of, uh, of April, yes, that's right. Oh. Very good. So thanks uh, for, for pointing that out. So Sikasi, and we will uh, make sure that also the link will be available so on our page. Uh, so then we have uh, another question. So how does a gamma factory fit uh, so into a larger landscape of particle accelerator and all the scientific facilities around the world? So you, uh, you see, uh, I think this question sh should be uh, given to a politician of science and not to uh, <laughs> physicists like me. Uh, first of all, you see, you know that uh, uh, CERN in its present uh, shape can survive in, 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 with its way of functioning and international uh, collaboration only if it goes to high energy uh, projects, you see. It's just that it's very difficult to imagine that, you see, uh, people would not go or, or do their best to go to the project like FCC or, the, or uh, for example, the, the CLIC or, the, the, or even Muon Collider. So uh, I consider this project as a backup, uh, as a very interesting backup solution, because you never know 
given all the history of accelerators like I don't know Isolde or or, or SSC, not not uh, the Isolde at at Brookhaven, you see here, here yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so you, my point is that you should always keep the uh, uh, backup solution in case the a uh, 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 large energy project would not be financed, and say. Uh, there will be several reasons why it is not finance. You see, he, not only having to do with the fact that for the first time, uh, we, we, there is no hint that we'll find something new at these new energies, but also the energy crisis is uh, uh, may become stronger, and those projects typically need a very huge energy. So. Uh, leaving the decision of the scientific politics to communities my goal is to uh, develop and the goal of the gamma factory group a project which at the moment can be considered as a backup solution what if you see he, he, uh, you see i will give you one more uh, he, one more sentence on that the development of electron ion collider initially at uh, at desi which somehow i was driving was because i was really questioning if tesla which was the uh, the main project at desi in the 90s will be constructed because of financing and political issues so uh, the initial phase of the uh, concept and the physics questions of the electron ion collider were developed at DESI, you see, and also in this context of the backup solution, what if you see Tesla would say uh, would not work. So I am giving this example to give you that uh, the uh, feeling that uh, it, uh, it is worthwhile if you do not engage large sum of money, but only enthusiasm of people to develop something that can serve in case the present modus of operandi of CERN, which large collaboration and going to high energy frontier would uh, not work because of any reasons. So we would, so that's why I'm saying that we should have the uh, pro principle experiment and the study of feasibility finalized in the middle of high luminosity LHC program, such that you see if there is nothing new, that people at least could have another solution of how you see the lifetime of the LHC can be prolonged. And at the end, I will mention only one thing, which is my personal thing. To me personally, the physics reach in terms of multitude of physics application of the gamma factory is much more important with respect to high energy frontier of high energy physics. But this is my private uh, view. It's, uh, I would not, you see, uh, uh, go with this view at this stage of this project. I would like to, to get it, you see, to the stage that it is a workable uh, uh, project. But uh, the driving force to develop this project is that many of us think developing this project, think that this conjunction of atomic physics, nuclear physics, applied physics is something that would refresh quite a lot the thinking, how you readdress the questions by looking at the normal matter with new tools, which are much better with respect to what we had in the past. Yeah, and uh, and indeed, this is. I mean, I think we will have really exciting uh, discussion when we'll be in April at the APS and about the fusion as well. We have a question from uh, Claude Masso as well. So, what kind of impact as well could be there on the fusion future? I think it's an excellent question. You see a a. a... I would love to have people uh, that are working on uh, not on uh, fission but on fusion, uh, looking at the capacity of the uh, gamma factory, especially uh, on the fact that we can have counter, uh, you see, counter propagating beams of uh, of highly collimated gammas, up to ten megawatts, which we can uh, focus on a, a very small point. So hey, uh, there is there has been uh, done no work on you see what that means in terms of hitting the matter in particular place you see if you uh, would like to follow more or less what uh, people achieved by having many sources of lasers you see uh, uh, 
that were shining to get a, 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 a fusion in the small granule you see of the a, a, of, of the matter so so this is on the back of our mind but we do not have any expertise on that see the expertise of the fusion that we started studying you see two, two months ago is mostly coming from chinese groups and the fact that we are now uh, going through all the simulation of the of the uh, 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 of the fusions uh, including the possibility of transmuting nuclear waste is because we have a strong involvement of the, of chinese groups so on 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 uh, so if the person who asked this question have some experience uh, uh, please have a look at the gamma factory photon beams especially going to megawatt beams take into account that we can have the counter propagating beams that would collide with each other you see and find out if this would help uh, you see in the uh, in the uh, fusion which will be not in the tokamak but you see somewhere you see in the uh, uh, like uh, like in the recent results that were uh, uh, presented i guess from from livermore yeah Very so i some... redo oh, this this question to the person who asked this question yeah so and we will um so try maybe claude mas also to send an email as well so to our platform and we'll put you as well in contact and send as well all those different publications and we will have as well for the accelerator driven system so i think for energy production within the the session that we have organized so with maybe from the slack for the april meeting also some possibility as well to to, to discuss that aspect of fusion fission and how as well it could be connected so thanks a lot so that was all the different questions we had so we we have um, so almost the time uh, that um, we wanted. If you want to maybe close your slides, so like this, we can have a, yes. a bit as well. So that stop, sure. And conclusion and your dream. So indeed, so in 20 years from now, we're going to see what uh, life going to be. But uh, indeed, there is a lot of impact. So this is why we wanted to look for this uh, um, April meeting uh, at how as well so science can help with accelerator for this energy uh, aspect as well. So thank you so much for this uh, wonderful moment. And we will uh, uh, so then uh, find, uh, um, so maybe now by sharing, uh, so the link I will just uh, so introduce the next speaker. So thanks again, Vitek. So we will meet then. Um, I can start by um, this, uh, sorry, presentation Whoop, here. Uh, no, sorry. Let me start by introducing first, uh, so the presentation from next month on the physics matter. So <clears throat> this time on term of applied physics. So looking at what, um, I mean, light source or a photon or a neutron source can make so that there could be some improvement of the battery. So whole of large scale facilities of a battery research and innovation by Professor Alexandra Matik, so from um, Göteborg University. Uh, we will have now, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of uh, this presentation, I'll just uh, pass all the different uh, sessions, the six sessions that uh, the FIP Forum of International Physics organized together and in joint cooperation with the Division of Condensed Matter Physics here. So it was shared also with Franz Helmert, who was uh, so the, the, um, the past president of the APS. So with the IUPAP, so that was a special session for the celebration of the 100th anniversary. We had the audience as well in the audience. Um, so also Michel Spiro with us, so Vitek. So I think it was really exciting. He was listening to every word that you were saying. And we recall that, uh, so Michel Spiro, he's the president of the IUPAP, but as well for the International Year of uh, so Basic Science and Fundamental and Sustainable Development. So someone who was also giving a presentation last November on our platform, Physics Matter. So you can look at all the recordings there. Uh, Monica Pepe Altarelli uh, so was leading and organizing all those um, events for this 100th anniversary. So she gave us a very comprehensible retrospective of everything that was uh, happening. We had uh, the view uh, from uh, um, so Chandra Lika as well of all the different challenges, looking at the educative part. Laura Green gave a very good review as well on the scientific diplomacy that 
the IUPAP is uh, um, enabling, so Stuart Pegger and then uh, James uh, Gubernatis. So we had a two um, uh, winner of, uh, I mean, two award winner in that session since uh, so Shakanita and uh, James uh, Gubernatis have been as well, so winning different APS uh, uh, award. We had two as well, um, so APS uh, presidents, so with uh, Francis and uh, Laura Green. So that was a very interesting session to start uh, this um, uh, big uh, March meeting. So we had also then on the day of International Women, uh, so the um, 8th of, uh, um, of March, so the possibility to look at how large scale uh, scientific facilities and diplomacy so can be used for um, different, uh, as different tools. So with Laura Green, who gave um, a very um, exciting representation of what MacLab, so the National High Magnetic Field Laboratories in Florida can uh, do. So uh, we had uh, Robert uh, Kinsnesser speaking about uh, the 30 meters uh, telescope. We had Elise Rabinovici telling the tale of the two accelerators, so with presentation of CERN and the SESAMI. So like a, a source of light in the Middle East, and we recall also that Elise Rabinovici gave in January this year, so the special colloquium for the physics matter so that you can revisit so through the recording. And Sekasi, so Matsuenga, who presented as well the um, African light source and all the LARPS program. So with a lot of uh, um, concrete as well aspect of how the CDR for the African light source is progressing. So all of that you can revisit on the page of the APS if you attended or not, so you have all the access. And as well by contacting, I can share so some of those information. And then on the same day, right after we had the possibility to turn the wheel and then to speak about um, so the also younger perspective for young physicists. So with a view of the different continent, and we were mentioning before, uh, so Hima Altamini, who was representing the IFAST slash uh, um, challenge based uh, innovation, which was presented last month on the physics matter edition as well. Matt uh, uh, who presented uh, uh, so from the ESS part as well, the DMSC, so data management and software center. So a lot of data that can be used uh, uh, in general. And Munia who presented uh, all the aspect of how the African strategy can be as well one. Uh, um, one actor in uh, the, the possibility of giving a landscape uh, for younger physicists uh, in the world. And uh, Munia um, Maniza was also one of the eight women that I mentioned before in uh, the presentation uh, that uh, we had uh, just Tuesday, actually, meaning two days ago with uh, uh, Sesame, so with Giham Kamel. So same thing, you can revisit uh, all of that. That was the LLO2. So I just didn't mention it here, but on those slides, so you can see as well. Now the coming uh, April meeting will be as exciting as well with possibility in um, the FIP session to really transcend the borders and uh, the frontiers with engineer without borders. So with Bernard Amadei, who will give as well a more complete presentation on the physics matter uh, uh, June. And uh, you will, you have heard as well from Kate Shaw, so representing the physics without frontier. So um, last uh, year as well, so you will find more detail, but then she will there, so only in um, less time, but giving possibility to have um, all the description of uh, all the tasks that ICTP is as well putting into that. And then Rolf Foyer, so will give a, a way as well how from as well the CISAMI and the CERN and many other infrastructure, how all science can bridge the culture and the nation. So that's really an inspiration for, for peace. And we will have, so extending the frontier of physics. So with the ELI, so that was um, the, the, the command that I was mentioning, so uh, Vitek, so he's the director of the ELI and in um, Prague as well, in Romania. So we will then get in the possibility to discuss all of that with uh, Jean-Michel Ray looking at how positron as well can be used and Valentina oh. Santoro for all the, the advanced highness. Huh? So which is like for neutron, uh, neutron source. Huh? And then we will finish. Uh, so in that session, so that's um, finishing. So with uh, 
um, so the, the retrospective of um, what you were mentioning before. So in combination, so with the division of the physics for the beam, so with the uh, organizer with uh, Maybai, as I was mentioning from Slack, where we had looked at how this uh, accelerating solving energy crisis, so from the fission to the fusion, so you will have then possibility to look uh, from uh, the MIRA perspective, uh, also from the gamma factory in more specific detail, and as well the, all the R&D in the America, and uh, also the status from this ADS uh, in the US. So very complete uh, um, panels uh, that uh, will give us the possibility to, uh, to learn more. Uh, here we go. So. Um, and I didn't, maybe that was one of the problem may not have. Well, I stop sharing now. Here we go. So, uh, so thanks you everyone for listening. So everything is recorded. I know it's always super long, but then we, we can always revisit all of that uh, at our conveniency. And I think it's uh, better than some of the movies that are less interesting. We've learned so much uh, with you as well today, so Vitek. So thank you so much for giving us this possibility for learning more. Learning is really the, the way forward. And thank you also, so Cheryl and everyone for, for your great comments. Greatly appreciate it. And pass the word, please spread the words about this, uh, this uh, seminar series, all the recording that since, uh, so the beginning of the pandemic with Riza Sifarelli and all the FIP team, we try to encourage to connect uh, everyone and to, to learn more and to try to interdisciplinary, but transdisciplinary as well. That's some of the key word that we try to, to foster. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, we will learn more about battery on uh, next month's uh, edition. So Vitex, so thanks again. Thank for you very much. Thanks. Time. Thanks, Christine. Thank you.